The next tab to configure in the SQC dialog box is this data filter tab. Now this has to do only with uh, this first section anyway, only has to do with those calculations of control limits that are being done automatically uh, as the data comes in. See if you have control parameters or control limits that are already set like this then the data filtering really is of no consequence. But when you omit these, if you recall, when you keep these blank, then, well, if you notice, it's going to take a look at the existing set of data, and as new data comes in, it's going to recalculate that. So how do we uh, decide what is a good enough set of data to actually do these three standard deviation calculations and, and come up with control limits? Well, we do it through this data filter tab, through the data filter tab you can specify the minimum data points needed to generate a valid standard deviation, that's sigma. In this case it's 10. And we can also specify that if you get values in your population that are outside a certain predefined number, in this case we're choosing 5, then we can decide to um, uh, anything outside 5 standard deviations we're simply going to ignore as an outlier. So this gives us a little control over how accurate the, um, or under what circumstances we will generate uh, control limits and which data we will use for generating those control limits. Obviously this gives you a lot of control over your outliers and this gives you control over how many values are going to go into that sample. On the bottom of the data filter tab there's a section that deals with the trigger tags and the transitions when the trigger tags do trigger a new calculation. Now let me back up for a second, go back to the general tab. If you recall, uh, one of the ways we could specify plot time was to specify a triggering tag. So for example, if I had a tag that, uh, well for example, changing of this tag from one product to a different product, when that, when that occurs, we can consider that's a transition from um, the need for one SQC calculation to another because now it's a it's a new product. When that happens as you transition we would like to be able to well to ignore some things uh, during any kind of a product change usually there's some kind of transitional period where SQC alarms can really just do more harm than good at that point they're just going to produce nuisance results so what we're suggesting is with those trigger tags you can go ahead and specify how many consecutive or non-consecutive values need to appear within a certain number of sigma of either each other or of the center line before we start to resume calculation. So for example in this case we need five consecutive samples within three sigma of each other in order to have a, a, a valid uh, point at which we can start the calculations over again. So until that situation is true until this criteria is met then we uh, we no longer do the uh, we no longer start the or we do not start the calculation until that condition is true now notice the toggles down here these check boxes you can specify that this happens just to the alarm calculation itself or also if you do not have fixed control limits and you're using the control limits uh, to be generated automatically, you can apply that filter to the sigma calculation that's used in deriving the control limits.